not surprising, very keen on cars. And the, the first car that I bought was this 1930 M-Type MG. Uh, I sold my very nice McLean's bicycle and my mother never asked why the bicycle had gone and nor why I was walking off with a bag of tools because round the corner was the little M-Type and that was with some, some chums of mine because when I got it, it just smoked like a chimney because, uh, and I you know, had to learn as I went along, but what had happened with it was that the, um, the valve guides had worn and I went to a place called Toolmin in South London and they put new valve guides in and they said, you know, this is a special engine with that camshaft because it was what was called, uh, I think, a double 12, which was this a is slight the wind tunnel. 41. And I like, the, this is the Myra full-size wind tunnel. And that's a, that's a famous piece of, piece of wool tuft. And it actually is very, it shows you what the air's doing. You know, it probably shows you that we didn't need those slots in the top, but they were, we thought that was MG at the time. And I'm looking at a diffuser underneath at the back and still enjoying it, you know, it's just good fun. That was the car that came out of it, which was the MGSV. That again, it was our director said, I want a thousand horsepower sports car, which he, he couldn't have, but it did have a Rouse engine of its own. Okay, a best kept secret. This, now you saw this car, some of you on that bit of film there, and it's, it is MG ZTT station wagon. And by that time I was working, but I was working actually as a consultant for MG Rover as the design director. And one of our board directors, Nick Stevenson, who was a bit of a hot rodder and drag racer at heart, he wanted to build a station wagon that would go 200 miles an hour because we were intending to sell a V8 engine station wagon the year afterwards. And so we had this, and we had this car built by some friends of mine at a place called SoCal Speed Shop in California. And they did a fantastic job of it. And it had a, <coughs> it had a Roush, normally aspirated engine. Yeah, and the engine, uh, Nick Stevenson wanted to see that the engine would produce um, 700 horsepower. And we had to take it to a, a rolling road to prove to him. And I don't know, has anybody here been in a rolling road when it's running at, flat out, because when you've got a car like this, which is chained with massive chains to the ground in the rolling road, and we're standing in there and it's producing 760 horsepower. So it's very hot, very loud and amazingly dynamic. And this thing's chattering all over the place. And I'm looking at the chains thinking, in fact, they tell me that if it breaks loose, it just stalls and stops dead because I thought this is going to be mayhem, but apparently it was, it was fine. And we took it to, we took it to Bonneville. And this was kind of this well-kept secret that MG Rover, who were rapidly running out of money at that point and didn't want to tell anybody in case it didn't work or whatever. And so I went out with my mates from SoCal Speed Shop and they didn't even send a photographer. So I did the, filming and the photographs and in fact the photographs you saw with the dog and the other ones and it was quite nice because what we did is and we need to see it we actually did their 225.609 miles an hour which was pretty darn good i i had the chance to drive it on what's called the short course where you're only allowed 170 and it was extremely exciting i must say it had um you, by the rules, you have to have a parachute on the back, partly because if something goes wrong, you can pop the parachute and it stabilizes the car. But what you have to do uh, to pop the parachute, you really need to be on full throttle because if you lift off and the car goes kind of nose down and then you do the parachute, it lifts the front wheels off the air. So even on the 170, somebody said, now remember, you've got to be nailed before, and then do the parachute, which is a surprising jerk. But, and we held the record, I think for about two days, and then somebody came with a station wagon with a thousand horsepower. But um, uh, Nick Stevenson, who'd come with us, and I said, oh, come on, you know, I'm sure we can get 230. No, 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 you know. And in typical MG Rover of that time, 
so we just kind of left it be. But it was pretty darn good, and it's going to be at the Goodwood of Festival of Speed when they're having the 100th anniversary of MG, and the car will be there, and I think I'm going to drive it up the hill, which, geared for 220, it'll be a bit sluggish. <laughs> okay, this is, I say, the least reliable client. This is MG Rover, and I'll just speedily do these, but this was... Um, this was when the Chinese were pretending that they wanted to buy MG Rover. And so we gave a, a show to them of the directions we might go in. And we even put little Chinese number plates just to flatter them on the, on the car. Um, but they didn't really have any intention of buying MG Rover. They, what their intention was to see it fall over and then buy it from the administrators, which is unfortunately what happened. Uh, meanwhile, we were doing a lot of bizarre things, I mean, one of which was quite nice, and I just... This is a coupe version of the MG TF. And I had suggested it, because we suggested projects all the time we were there, and I suggested that we should do this, and they said, no, it's impossible. I said, well, we want 17-inch wheels. No, you can't fit 17-inch wheels. And we want this hard top. No, you can't do that because you can't get to the engine. So secretly in design we just went ahead and did it and you could drive it and it had 17 inch wheels and you could get at the engine uh, but we were just a little bit too late because just a few weeks later the company disappeared but amongst the things it did and again I was involved this was a a Le Mans car with with Lola and it was just a little two litre car but the aero stuff that the guys at Lola did was super and it it ran very well for quite a few hours actually at at Le Mans. It unfortunately had um, an engine which was probably close to a hand grenade or a Nissan, neither of which you're supposed to have. So, <laughs> yeah, the Nissan wasn't clever and it had to be disguised because it was an engine that had been done for Nissan. This one is a kind of extreme version of, um, of TF. And we've... But... I think it's what this was in the last two weeks of the life of uh, MG Rover, and it was to be an MG ZT DTM car. And we took a ZT up to some people I know in Norfolk called Dove Company, and we, we quickly turned it into what was supposed to look a bit like a DTM car, but kind of knowing that this was <laughs> the death throes of the place and completely, completely silly. And it would probably been awful as the DTM car too. But it was kind of where the, the atmosphere at MG Rover had become so frantic that people were just, you know, searching everywhere for something we might do.